From the day the first white settlers landed on American shores, the warriors of the Indian nations had fought grimly to retain their lands. Finally, by 1753, treaties were signed with the English and the French and the Indian people were learning to live peacefully with their new neighbors, at least for the time being. in school, but apparently he's learned more than is in books. Well, you don't suppose that was Homer I was teaching him out behind your barn, do you, Colonel Washington? <laughs> I'll wager five guineas on the Indian. This leads to proofs of your teaching. Well, does no man here have the courage of his conviction? Five guineas on the Indian. Governor Dinwiddie. Believe me, Miss Leeds, it is not the courage of my convictions that brings me here, but my desire to stand in the light of Williamsburg's most famous beauty. I'll accept your wager, however. The governor is most gracious. If you'll pardon me, my dear Elizabeth, it hardly seems fitting to wager on an Indian against one of our own people. I'll think about that if my Indian loses. You can't tell me, Felisa, that Elizabeth Leeds isn't. No one but a Jezebel would live in a tavern the way she does. Perhaps our friend had better go back to Homer. Another five guineas, Elizabeth? Done. Let me learn that trick with his knees. Learn it. An Indian position for scalping. It appears that you've won the silver buckles. Why? My congratulations, sir. I, I thank you very much. You've learned to speak English as well as you wrestled this past year. You must be either an exceptional pupil, Prince Hannah, or your two friends are exceptional instructors. So do you <laughs> like our protege, eh, Governor? He's made me jealous. From the way Miss Leeds looked at him, I shall always regret that I aspired to be a statesman instead of a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> now, sir, you have still another honor. As winner of this contest, you are to present the prize to the most beautiful girl on the fields today, Miss Elizabeth Leeds. This is abominably bad taste. 
I, I refuse to allow a savage to present such intimate garments as stockings to you. I suppose they would be less intimate if you gave them to me. Miss Leeds, our very good friend, Prince Hanok, son of Shingus, king of the Delaware Indian nation, has a fitting prize for the loveliest maid in all the colonies. Prince, why is it that I haven't met this young man before? Perhaps I, I'm the wrong one to give the prize. No, Hanok, you're the right one. It's only the place which is wrong. You will keep the stockings. Keep them? And present them to me in private, tonight at the inn. Why, well, I, uh, I shall be honored, Miss Leeds. And by tonight, lovely lady, we shall have taught our friends sufficient pretty speeches with which to entertain you. If you don't mind, Colonel Washington, I would prefer to teach you myself. Good day. Tonight, my friend, you receive your diploma. Our Elizabeth doesn't come down to entertain us with her sprightly conversation. Apparently, she'd rather be entertained than do the entertaining this evening, eh, Appleby? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, cheer up. Perhaps the Indian will be too frightened to come here. <laughs> I've known you ever since you were a pup, Hennick. Take my advice. When Elizabeth Leeds issues an invitation, you don't refuse it. That's right. She did the asking, not you. Still, with some men, friendship for the Indian is just words. They do not feel it in their hearts. Yeah, but Elizabeth's not a man, and that's exactly where she feels it. Colonel Washington and Christopher Gist had the manners of gentlemen, they would not allow Elizabeth to be alone with this, this redskin. You want to hold on to your hair, Appleby? You better keep your mouth shut. No one talks to Hannock with such words. Oh, so you don't like it, eh? All right, Indian. Since gentlemen can't wrestle, perhaps you'd like to choose some other weapons. A duel? You must be out of your mind, Appleby. Hannock knows nothing about swords. He has spoken. I will choose my weapon as he wishes. I have chosen. A meat cleaver? Well, how could a cleaver be a weapon? A white man has taught me many things. Now I will teach him something. Oh, God, just a moment. That, Mr. Appleby, could just as well have been your skull. Next time, you'd better choose the weapons, Appleby. Hannock. I like dependable men. Has a man ever been late for an appointment with Elizabeth Lees? Been coached well in your pretty speeches. <laughs> the white man thinks it's necessary to be able to fence with a sword or words. Does a meeting with a woman have to be considered a duel? If the woman makes the first thrust. I see. You're wondering why I was so forward this afternoon. Let's say that I was pleased with you for having won my wager for me. That's from a practical standpoint. From a woman's standpoint, we can say that I was impressed by the manner in which you won it. And having been impressed by other men also, you now wish to add me to your collection? Every woman has a collection until the right man makes her discard it. You have charm, seem to be intelligent, and you have strength. 
A woman needs no more of a man. Yes, you could be the right one. But I am an Indian. Would that stop you from kissing me? Yes. That would not keep me from thinking about it. You brought my prize? Good. Now, I have a gift for you. Perhaps this Indian friendship belt should mean something to you. Where did you get it? I... My mother gave it to me. She thought it would help to remind me that I'm half Shawnee. You? My father gave me the red hair to remind me that I'm half white. I... Drink your wine. Don't you want to see how the stockings look? You are more white than Indian. You could not share the life of an Indian man. What a time to be suspicious, darling. Here, you may tell the committee that you're an eyewitness that your prize is a perfect fit. Well, Hannah. Is there still room in your mind for suspicion? Haddock? Ha Something's gone wrong. Wait here. So you come here? I just saw the Indian walk out. Evidently, he's not as easy as you thought. He's a challenge. Zuno just brought me some news. The Miamis who came north of Saint Pierre make their first raid tomorrow. You can count on me, John. The Delawares will not interfere. It is most necessary, Elizabeth, that we have Hannock, Prince of the Delawares, in a very friendly mood. You will find a way. Do you doubt it? <laughs> no. who staged the raid were definitely identified as French Miamis. But how could the French dare make such moves without proper military strength in the Northern Territory? Without it? They're constructing forts at every advantageous spot along the Ohio. Their intention, Colonel, is to connect their settlements in the south with Canada and hem us into an area east of the Allegheny Mountains. Now, they're building forts on our land. That's why I sent for you. I'm ready for anything you suggest, sir. Our only hope is to bring the Delawares over to our side. 
They're the most powerful tribe. And if they join us, other tribes will follow. Well, but Shingus, the Delaware chief, has always been neutral. If war comes, he can no longer remain neutral. You must see Shingus and find a way to convince him that we are in the right. I'll do my very best, sir. You're also to deliver a formal protest to the French commandant at Fort Le Boeuf near Lake Erie. Wait for his answer. It will be a most dangerous journey, Colonel. Governor, if you'll give me the proper men and supplies. You'll have everything you need by tomorrow morning. The life of this colony may depend on your life. So be careful, my friend, and, and may God speed you. Thank you, sir. If there is to be war, believe me, Hannock, I don't want it. But we'll fight if we have to. And you want me to ask my father to join the English and take up the hatchet against the French? The French have already taken everything from the other tribes, Hannock. If they beat the English, they'll take all the fine villages and farms from the Delawares, too. You are my friends, and I would gladly fight your fight. But to ask other men to die for you, that I must think about. There isn't much more time, Hannock. I will bring you an answer before the sun rises again. For the sake of the Delawares, I hope it's the right answer. For the sake of our homes, too. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Well, my friend, we've trapped our butcher without his meat cleaver. Teach him a lesson. Show him he can't insult Elizabeth Lee. Send him where he belongs. Not so brave now, eh, Indian? <laughs> there, my pet. You see how simple it is? Sheer genius. I will now bring our Indian prince back into the fold. Wait in the other room. shall receive a medal for this, Appleby. Three of you to beat a helpless man, and he's still on his feet. But if it's a Here, yeah. take this and go beat your horse. It can fight back even less. You better let me clean those wounds. Why were you coming back this way, Hannock? Was it to see me? I had not wanted to see you. Afraid? Elizabeth, why did you come to help me? Oh, because you're pig-headed and proud, and because I meant so little to you before. I don't like feeling small in a man's eyes, Hannock. I guess I was in the wrong. Something troubled you? Yes. What is it? Colonel Washington says the French are spreading like fire in a field of corn. They have forts everywhere, and every day more of their soldiers march over Indian land. Why do you speak now of politics and war? Because tonight I must give my friends an answer. About what, Hannick? Concerns my people. Elizabeth, you say you're half Indian. Yes. Then perhaps you can feel as I feel. Can the Delaware stand by, as my father is doing, and have everything taken away from them by the French? That's absurd. The French don't want war, I'm sure. Governor Dinwiddie thinks differently. Tomorrow, Colonel Washington marches with an armed force of 40 men to deliver a protest to the French commander. That should still not affect you. But he wants me to go. Also to influence my father on behalf of the English, to fight for them in case of war. Hannah, you won't. Do you want to see your English friends defeated? No, no, of course not, but I don't want to see you hurt, Hannah. Don't let your tribe go to war, Hannock. Stay here. You will be here when I return. 
Then your mind is made up. Can you love a man who is afraid and hides? Do as you will, Hannock. I'm a woman and know nothing of war or the glory that men find in it. I'll be waiting for you. Goodbye, Miss John? You heard? I didn't. Oh, what a shame. To think that 40 men must die. There is no road safe for such a journey. We must make our own road. You trapped in that area, Chris. What do you think? An armed force of 40 men would look like a war party to a brave that preferred French brandy to English rum. We could make better time on the road. Or no time at all. We must not be seen. Hannock's right, George. Governor Dinwiddie's going to send us some Nohicans to serve as guides. We could dress our rangers in green, the color of the forest this time of the year. Good. Hannock, a great measure of the safety of this expedition will be in your hands. You don't know how glad I am to have you with us. Oh, thank you, George. You two can talk pretty words if you want to. I believe in stronger stuff. I'm for putting some of this wine under my scalp while I'm still wearing it. This may be our last toast in a time of peace. There's got to be war. Let's give them better than we get. Gentlemen, to victory. To our country. thought to elude us by staying off the trails, eh, Monsieur Delarue? It is fortunate we found them before they reached the Delawares. Ah, they are close. On the strike tonight. I have a plan. Very well, Major, tonight. Hear anything? Nothing. Better if we did. It's too quiet. I'll post double guards tonight. Together we are few. Separated we are many. We must have two camps. And if one is attacked, the other can hit the attackers from the rear. You're right. Will you take the other force? Yes. We'll be hidden in the force not more than a hundred yards away. Sleep with your ears open, my friends.
Thanks, Hannock. I guess I've got a lot to learn about Indian fighting. If it hadn't been for that surprise attack of yours, I don't know what I would... Oh, mon dieu. Mon dieu. Frenchmen disguised as Indians. Frenchmen? Trying to stop us from reaching Shingas without causing an incident which might start open warfare. If we'd been massacred, it would have looked like an Indian attack instead of French. And all they succeeded in doing was to bring us a step nearer to war. My friends, we'd better be moving on. The sooner my father knows of this, the better. All right, men, break camp. We're moving. We've been hearing those drums for the last half hour. Bad. I don't like it. Neither do I. We're likely to get the worst case of stomach ache we ever had. Stomach ache? They're the drums of my father, inviting you to a ceremonial feast. Listen to them. They'll give us double portions of roast bear, wild turkey, and stewed porcupine. Yeah, they're gonna raise Holy Ned tonight. A prince is coming home. Nothing better than an Indian friendship belt to keep a man's scalp in place. <laughs> Hello. You do not remember Morna? Sure, I remember Morna. She was a cute little tyke about. Morna! <laughs> I am 22 summers now. You certainly are, honey. You most certainly are. <laughs> so you still remember your Uncle Chris? I remember everything. I remember all the English you teach Shingus and Morna. I have talked with white man trappers many times. I remember Fox. Have you seen Hannock yet? No. Do you think he still liked me? Yeah, yeah, he still likes you, Morna. You never outgo your love for him. Never. Where is Hannock? He's, uh, he's with Shingus, big powwow. I'll go see him. No, 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 wait a minute. How's your chicken, Davy? Mmm, that's a little fishy. It ought to, it's a rattlesnake. Delaware's always strong nation. Strong with lands. Strong with hunting grounds. Strong with many warriors. But not strong with many cannon fingers. Armed as you are, the French could overrun the Delaware nation in two weeks. And you, my son, what do you feel? I have learned to trust the words of Colonel Washington. There is much to... To think about? To think about. But now my son is back with his people. And I am glad. For in not many moons, he will be king. And his people will need him. And so, there is much eating, much dancing we must do, because he returns. Hannock! The cricket! The little cricket who hunted and fought and acted like a man-child. Look what she has become. A woman. Hannock, there is much we must talk about. Then we will talk, Morna. We will see you at the feast. Someday she will be queen. I do not want trouble between them. For many moons she has been as daughter to me. And I have taught her to be a queen. There is no other woman. That's something Hannock will have to answer himself, Shingus. A white woman? Shingus, I... My son has learned and has the white man's knowledge here, but 
the Indian people must stay together. Here. You did not have to come this far to talk, Morna. I have a reason for coming here, Hanuk. See? But it's only an old tree trunk. No, it's more than that. Maybe now you'll remember. Remember? You wanted to show Morna your great strength. So you shot the arrow into this old trunk. And you said that as you were strong, so was your love strong. And that it would last longer than this arrow would stay in the tree. And the arrow is still here. Morna, I do love you. I've always loved you as one would love a sister, but not as my squaw to be. Little cricket, please listen to me. Morna! Just isn't any more room in. Friend of Indian Brave must eat. Oh, but I, I, I couldn't possibly eat anything more. Eat. Oh, eat. I... Is this some more of that porcupine stew? No porcupine. No? Him skunk. <laughs> Him change color, much pale face. <laughs> Mona. <laughs> the heart of Shingis is heavy too. We have both lost him. The white men have taken my son and want to repay me with war and death. Father, you think being with a white man is wrong. You always have. But you don't know them. You haven't even seen their towns. They have much wisdom, and that wisdom I can bring to our nation. Wisdom? Better ways for men to kill each other. Better ways for war. But there are many other things. They can bring only war to me. War and a son who is no longer an Indian. A son who thinks he can make a white woman his squaw. That white woman is part Shawnee. So, you will tell your friends there will be no treaty between Shingis and the English. I will not fight for them. The Delawares will stand alone. And the Delawares will die alone. George, Gris, you have not too many more miles to go before you reach the French fort. Perhaps it would be better if you went on without me. Without you? What for? You would have made my father think your way if it had not been for me. Now listen, Hannock. A man's certainly entitled to pick out his own squaw. If you didn't want one... Hannock, anything could happen to us between here and Fort LeBeuf. We're gonna need your help. I won't say anything more than that. It is enough. I hope I can make good the harm I've done. We must go further before the sun sets. All right, men, on your feet.
was an Indian trick, I tell you, Saint Pierre, splitting their force the way they did. No Englishman would have thought of it. Shingis's son Hammock was with them. Therefore, we're forced to presume that Washington was able to secure the promise of help from Shingis with Hammock's influence. A treaty between the Delawares and the English would call for a king's signature, would it not? Of course, but there would be considerations. Shingis would want something in return for his aid. Huh. Then there is time. For what? Oh, to impress upon Shingis that he has made a bad bargain and that he can yet change his mind. That may be more difficult than you think. If we were to declare that the very land on which the Delawares live is French land, either the Delawares would have to side with us or lose their land. See anything up ahead? Wyandotte Village. Wyandotte? In this territory? Well, they're French Indians from Detroit. First the Miamis, now the Wyandots. It means the French are bringing Indian reinforcements into the territory. That and something else. There's only women and children in the village. All the Wyandotte braves are gone. But they couldn't all be on a hunting party. I can't figure it out, George, but the French are up to something. Well, there's only one thing we can do. Deliver Dinwiddie's protest to the French commander and get out as fast as possible. This whole area is a powder keg. And gentlemen, the fuse is already lighted. Welcome to Fort LeBeouf, Colonel Washington. Thank you, Commandant. No doubt my reaching here comes as somewhat a surprise to you. Any visitor would be a surprise in this territory, Colonel, and especially English visitors. But since this is a large, well-equipped fort, we're prepared to make your stay here a gracious one. My thanks, sir. Lieutenant, show the men to their quarters. I would be most pleased to share my quarters with the emissary of His Excellency, Governor Dinwiddie. You seem to know a great deal of my affairs, sir. I uh, was about to say, c'est la guerre, colonel, eh? But it is not yet time for that, no? The time, sir, will be up to you. Shall we go? Well, they're in. Now all we have to worry about is it to get out. They don't leave the fort within 12 hours will be up to us. Splitting one's force can work in many ways. So, your governor, Dinwiddie, expects the French to vacate this territory and uh, leave our fine force to the English. Well, it's a matter of real estate, Commander. You happen to have built your uh, structures on land that doesn't belong to you. My king thinks otherwise. Well. Then I shall be pleased to leave at once and make that report to my superiors. I'm afraid that won't be possible as yet. Why not? There are many tribes in this territory that have little liking for the English, and until I can guarantee your safety, I... And if I propose to worry about my own safety and leave at once? <laughs> you are making it difficult for me, Colonel. Then I'm being held prisoner. Oh, a harsh word, sir. Let us just say that you are a guest for a few days. The Wyandotte Braves weren't in their village. Your forces at the fort are at half strength, and now you're detaining me. Why? We just don't want any interference from you, Colonel. Especially since my men and the Wyandots are on their way to acquire more real estate. Delaware real estate.
I wouldn't do what you are thinking, Colonel. My sentries would not appreciate it. May rest assured, I had no intention of discussing it with them. Good night, sir. Colonel, it's them. And with those blasted Frenchmen holding our guns, we can't lift a finger to help them. to be coming closer. There it is. Put out the light. We'll get the rifles from the powder house. Follow us without powder. They're going to attack the Delaware village. I don't know whether we can make them time, Henry.
camping gear, Captain Schumerville? Not until we reach the end of French Creek. By that time, we should have made contact with the Wild Darts. Well, they're coming down the river in canoes. Purposely. The plan is to converge on a Delaware village from two directions. We are coming to marshland. Tell a man to keep their powder dry. Company! En avant! War canoes are coming down the river, and the French soldiers are marching across the great meadow. French soldiers and Wyandots tell warriors to be ready, but no one is to take up tomahawk unless I give order. are fresher. We're gaining on them. Chingis, sachem of Delaware nation, welcomes his French brothers to his fireside. His brothers? If Shingiz wishes to be brother to great white French king of France, he will not object if this plate is buried on the land on which he stands. Plate? What is this of a plate? I shall be pleased to read to you what is on this plate, Shingiz. In the year 1753, of the reign of Louis XV, king of France, we have buried on the side of the village of Shingiz king of the Delaware nation, this plate of lead near the river Ohio, as a monument of possession we have taken of these said river, and of all lands on both sides. These are white men's lives. You have no treaty with us. You will not bury your plate on my land. Then you take up the hatchet against the king of France. If French want Delaware land, they must fight for it. Monto! will head for their canoes. Cut them off.
have proven your words, George Washington. They cannot be brother to Delaware. And I know now that Delaware cannot stand alone to fight them. So I will go with you to your Virginia to hold powwow with white brother Dinwiddie. If good treaty is made, Delawares will fight by side of English. You'll never regret it, Shingus. There is one thing. Yes? I go only if... if Morna goes with us. But, Father, it is a hard trip even for men. Where others must walk, crickets can fly. And since you are so worried over Morna's well-being, she shall be in your charge for the journey. And Saint Pierre is not the genius I thought him to be. How could he possibly have allowed Washington and his men to escape from the fort? It was an Indian trick of some kind. Halleck again. Now Washington is bringing Shingas here. Your plans for stopping an alliance between the Delawares and the English haven't been very successful, John. And you, Elizabeth, were to have Hannock eating out of your hand? Perhaps I still can. He loves me, John. You heard him say so. There it is, Shingus. The end of our journey. Williamsburg will be open to you as a new brother. A village of peace. That is good. It is not a fort built of high walls, of cannon, of soldiers. The English build villages where people live, not fight. I think you know we can fight if we have to. No, we are people of a new world, where there can be freedom for every man. The French carry Paris-made blades at their sides. Paris made wines in their stomachs. We are making our own blades, our own wines, so that we can be independent. The French build forts. We are building a country. Your head is old for your shoulders. Someday it will be even a more wise head. The head of greatness. Thank you, Shingles. I, I wish I could be as confident of the future. As for you, quiet little cricket, stay close to Hannah. These great villages are not red men's villages. In them, only a white man can live his whole life. The heart of Hannah will be yours. like a faithful sheepdog. Well, you must admit, Miss Leeds makes a beautiful shepherd. It's getting monotonous. It's been the same ever since he returned two months ago. I can go to the theater if I want to watch a romance. There. Do you see? Once again, our sophisticated Elizabeth will go walking through the park with him, holding hands like schoolchildren. Sophistication is of the mind, Appleby, not the heart. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I must leave. Important business at the governor's mansion tonight. I trust you'll have as boring a time as I am. Ah. Chingus. We have seen two moons come and go since we came here to the white man's village. And what I had hoped this happiness for you has been only sadness. There is nothing we can do if Hanuk loves another. This white woman is not good for him, Orna. What does she want with him? Hanuk is not hard to love. It is not right for you to have to stay here this way. The moment the treaty arrives from the great white king in England, we will return to our village. Will it be soon? I believe it will be soon. Even now, there is a meeting of many men. Perhaps we will get word when it is over. Secretly, under the advisement of Colonel Washington, upon his return from Fort Liberth two months ago, we began immediate construction of a fort at Great Meadows. Fort necessity is finished, gentlemen, ready to be manned. We decided to call it necessity for a very obvious reason. The necessity for protecting ourselves from the French. Mr. Delamont, you have been summoned to this meeting since your company is the largest importer in the colonies. We need supplies for the fort and silks and linens for trading with the Indians. If Your Excellency will submit a list of the desired items. Your Excellency, if the plan is to man and maintain Fort Necessity without the help of the Delawares, I doubt very much if it can be defended successfully. We cannot afford to be taken by a surprise attack while waiting for the treaty to reach here. Come in. Governor Dinwiddie. We just had word a large French force had been gathering at Fort Leboeuf, and the Ottawas are coming down from Canada to join them. The Ottawas and the Wyandots, two of the most powerful tribes in the north. There you have it, gentlemen. There will be war at any moment. Colonel, the only immediately available men are those of the militia, some 150. You are to leave for the fort with these soldiers tonight. But according to the report, Your Excellency, there are more than a thousand French and Indians up there. I have no choice but to ask you to do the best you can at necessity until the signed treaty arrives. But if I talk to Hanuk and Shingas, they'll let their warriors march with me without the treaty. The treaty calls for the king to deed large parcels of Ohio Company land to the Delawares in exchange for their aid. I have no right to give Shingas this land without the king's permission. The militia will be your only force. And may the right triumph. My father is still the stubborn one. He says he will not help the English until he knows that your king will help the Delawares. He's not stubborn, Hannock. He's right. The only way your nation can hold together is to have good lands for hunting and farming. No, this isn't your fight yet, Hannock. But I'm going to pray that the treaty arrives soon and that I have you and your men at my side when I need you. You white men and your scraps of paper, your treaties. Is it not better that a friend should live? You red men and your nobility. You came to study us, Hannock. The shoe should have been on the other foot. Such fools, Elizabeth. Expecting to hold necessity with a handful of half-trained militiamen. Yes, Elizabeth? Necessity will be a plum ripe for the picking. And if the treaty arrives soon, what then? It will not be such a ripe plum. Ah, uh, Monsieur Delaru? Mm, it will make no difference, Elizabeth. Shingis will not be alive to see it. Oh? Weeks have passed, Governor Dinwiddie, weeks, and still you have no word on the treaty. You're worried about your friends. You'd like to be there to help Washington and Gist. Perhaps you'll be pleased to learn that they reached Fort Necessity in safety. Of course they reached it. The French let them reach it. And now that they've got them locked up in that prison you call a fort, they'll crush them whenever they wish. Hannah. The French, Ottawa's Wyandots and Miamis, could have killed every man in that detachment the minute they moved north of Stone Creek. 
Now they'll make it look like a big victory at the fort to impress the rest of the Indian tribes. Hannock, my friend, be patient just a little while longer. to say if you're caught. We oui, Monsieur Devon. Idiot. Forget that your French speak only English. I'll remember. Carmine. Mean. He has no word for us. No. It is not good. Perhaps the English king does not place much value on the aid of Delaware's. We must wait a little longer. I can't let my friends die. It is well, my son. I will just have to suffer in that saddle of the devil a little more. <laughs> a chief who has stood the torture of fire can surely defeat such a soft enemy. White man wants all the ground and sky there is. And then, when he has it, he sleeps on beds so he cannot feel the ground and puts roofs over his head so he cannot touch the sky. <laughs> uh, I will ride that thing until its spirit is broken. <laughs> Good night, Hanak. Good night, Father. a white man's bath. It is strange the way the people of these big villages bring the rivers into their very houses to bathe. It smells as though they bring in the flowers, too. The women also have a very strange custom. They wish to smell like flowers. Elizabeth Leeds uses flower water. Elizabeth? What do you know of Elizabeth, Morna? A cricket does more than make noise, Hannock. It listens, too. I shall smell even better than Elizabeth Leeds. If you can learn from the white people, Hannock, I can too. Get out of that, that devil's wash tub and get dressed. I have more important things to talk of. I'm against you, Hannock. Your father said you are no longer an Indian. He has much wisdom. You walk a line between Indian and white man, and you cannot cross either way. The cricket has the sting of a bee. Mother! Hannock! Father! Do what you can, Morna. following Dinwiddie's orders. You are lying. Oh, it's the truth. Dinwiddie thought your father would go over to the French if he knew the treaty wasn't signed.
Get inside, you fool. I told you not to come here. You sure you weren't followed? I, uh, I, I don't think so. But we got the old man. But his son had to come after us. Get out. Get out. You can't be found here. No way, John. Let him stay for a while. After he went inside, he was no longer there. He could only have gone up the stairs. But that's... Morna, I want the truth. It is the truth, Hammock. It's the only answer. Instead of leaving tomorrow to bring the news of Shingas' death to St. Pierre, you leave tonight. And take him with you. It's better if he's away from here. As usual, you're right. Be careful while I'm gone, my chef. And your job. Give us something better. French spies, John Delmont and Elizabeth Leeds. Where's Elizabeth? I killed her. Killed her? Only the half that's white. Gentlemen, shall we call on the governor?
How much longer do you think they can hold out? They've hit several of our water barrels. I wish Din when you were here to enjoy this little picnic with us. We've got any wishes coming. I'd rather hope that Hannock and his Delawares were here. when they try fire. Well, at least if we can't have the fort, they won't get it. Perhaps this will serve to teach England that America can't be held with delays and promises and lack of trained men and arms. Maybe so, George. Just that I don't like the idea of being one of the teachers in this kind of school. The other arrow was shot when we were children. This one will mean even more. When the war is over and the French armies have left our land, I'll come back to my people, little cricket. You'll be here? I'll be here. Well, if we haven't taught the Indians anything else, at least they did learn that from the white man. Yeah. I wonder how that arrow trick would work on a girl I know in Roanoke. 